Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to go over how to have a game object stay and travel between multiple scenes. And the reason why we would do something like this is to enable, let's say, save parameters or just, you know, I picked this one item up and how do I make sure I know that item has been picked up in another area of the game and so forth. So we're going to just start with an empty game file. And from there, what we're going to do is first save the scene. So I'll go file, save scene. And I'm just going to make sure I save it in my scenes. Now I'm just going to call this uh, uh, keep object. All right. So now that we have that, I'm just going to go through. Uh, some of the basic stuff that we normally would go uh, over. So I'm going to have an image and this image, I'm just going to stretch it to the entire piece. And then I'm just going to have a button. All right, button right there. And this button, it's going to just say, go to level one. All right, nothing too crazy. So if you see that, that's how it looks like. If I hit play, you know, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but it kind of goes over what we need to do. All right. Now, um, before in previous uh, pieces, I've talked about creating this game object that holds some scripts and just some of the data that you might need from uh to go from one scene to the next. So that's what we're going to do here is I'm going to create an empty game object and I'm going to rename it to game manager. Okay. So now everything inside of here, uh, we want to have it where it will, uh, travel between one area to the next. All right. So, uh, from the button video, we have, uh, a JS file called uh, change scene. So I'm just throwing it in here. What that does is just enables me to access a button to go to the next level. All right. So um, I'm going to go back into my button and right here on click, I'm just going to say I want to. Let's look for the game manager. Go to function, change scene, and go to level one. All right. And I just took it as is from the previous one so if we look at it we have these three functions one goes to title options and level one okay uh, yours could have whatever it wants but this is from a previous video okay so now if I hit play we have this we say go to level one it goes to level one okay oh I actually have some music going on there so um, maybe I'll do title page um, in here, let's see. We'll go to options. That way, then it goes somewhere with no music. Okay, cool. All right, so it goes there. Because what I'm going to show you now is an easy way to make sure the object doesn't get destroyed, and how to get your audio to play continuously as you go forward. Now, uh, I'm going to hit play one more time just to show you what I'm talking about. Right now, you have these objects. And see where it says Game Manager right here? Uh, when I go to the next area, notice how Game Manager is gone. Okay? So, um, what I want to do is make sure Game Manager goes with you. Okay? So, what we're going to do is open up the the script that's in the game manager, which is change scene script. So I'm just going to open it up here. Okay. And the one thing that we're going to go over is, um, the piece that we want to run, we always want it to run moving forward. Okay. So, uh, what do I mean by that? Meaning once we hit play, I want it to start and actually execute this, uh, p piece of code. All right. And, uh, what this piece of code is called is don't destroy on load. And inside of here, it's going to ask for a game object. Okay. 
However, we need to um, make a public variable, and I'm going to call this game manager is a game object. Okay. So by doing that, we're just going to say, hey, whatever you drag in, it's going to make sure it keeps it. So game manager. All right. So if I hit save, if we go here, go to console. There are no errors. If I click on game manager, now you see where game manager needs an object. We're just going to drag itself there. All right. Boom. Now, if you do this right and I hit play, game manager is there. And now notice how game manager is still there. And that's that's the really important piece when you're doing this is that's how you get it to go to the next one. So as you move forward, then it's not going to get destroyed. Um, so it's uh, very helpful to have that set up. Now, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to go into my music and I'm just going to show you how easy it is to get the audio to work through. OK, first, if I go in this gray area import audio source it's just right there and here is the audio source it's going to ask for the clip oops uh, the audio clip i just have one there so i'm going to drag it over right here so if i hit play it's going to ask for this right and then um you hear the sound i go to the next nothing right so what we're going to do is if we drag this audio source inside this game manager now it won't get destroyed so which means once i hit this notice how that the audio kept on going so that's one way of how to get it to keep on going without it restarting or anything like that so it's pretty helpful for you guys okay now when you do this though it's important to understand that if i save this and then if i would need it to use uh like an object a script that's in here in a different scene you have to add that into your scene in order for it to work and uh, what do I mean right now if I hit play I go and now this is the options uh, unity which is right here and it has game manager okay so what I'm gonna do is let me just open uh, let me go to my scenes go to options Okay, and this is all that there really is in the options. Okay, now notice how there's no music or no nothing, right? So if you have critical pieces of information, how do you get it in here? And that's an important question to make sure you understand uh, is uh, you need to make a prefab. That way you could always throw the prefab in here to get your game to work the way you want it to. So what do I mean? If we go back to our previous scene, let's see, we called it keep object. Okay. And if this game manager right here, if I went into prefabs and I'm going to make a brand new prefab and I'm going to call this game manager, I just drag that into it. Boom. Okay. Now that's in there, all right? So we have a bunch of stuff, okay? Now, um, what I can do is um, go to my options page, go to prefab, dump this here, and now if I hit play in options, hey, I have it. And if you hit back, you know, it's gonna it's gonna do very interesting interesting things. Uh, I think um, ignore the double playing because I actually actually it, it's not that you have to ignore it. The, uh, it will play twice if you have more than one game manager on the scene. So if I went back to my scenes, let's go back to keep object. Oh yeah, let's save that. So now if I hit play. You're going to hear the set of music play, right? Now, when I hit go to level, it's playing twice. And that's because there's two of them here, right? So that's why I told you to make a prefab. That way, 
you know, you only put this game manager at the beginning of your game. And when you're testing scenes, you could put it in each level to test it, but you got to make sure you delete it. Okay. So for example, um, in the options page, I don't need it. So I'm going to hit delete. And now if I go back to keep object, hit play, it's going to play. And now there's only one. Okay. So, um, it takes a while to get used to, but make sure you remember if there's certain pieces you want to travel with you from scene to scene, uh, you would want to make this. And the important piece of code that you need to just uh, make sure you understand is this one line. Don't destroy on load. As long as you add whatever you don't want to have destroyed, it'll save all that. Okay? So go ahead and play with that, and hopefully that helps you out with your game.